About a month ago, I stood here and shared that I had um, gone and gotten my physical and gotten a clean bill of health. And at the time, I believed that was true. And the only thing left was a colonoscopy, but that was, you know, that was going to be routine. No problem. Uh, they, they were going to be okay with that. So on Thursday, June the 13th, I went for my colonoscopy. Uh, Evie went, went with me, and um, much to our surprise, uh, the doctor found a mass in my lower colon. Now, I have a good piece of advice for all you men 50 and older. Number one, go get a colonoscopy. Do you hear me? Number two, oh, and by the way, insurance, no insurance, don't let that stop you. There are ways to get them. Just go do it. But number two, don't get a colonoscopy on Thursday or Friday because guess what? If they find out anything, you have to wait until Monday for the results. So for four days, we didn't know what the biopsy results would be. And I would like to tell you that I was full of faith and overcame every doubt. But the truth is that I was full of anxiety, um, incredibly nervous and overwhelmed with stress. That's just a daunting thing to consider. I had to take medicine to help me go to sleep. And when I was awake, all I wanted to do was either pace the floor or sit there and recite my scriptures over and over again. And all weekend long, we were praying, Lord, just let it be benign. Just let it be benign. I remember even saying the word benign will never sound so sweet as when the doctor calls and tells me that it's benign. But on Monday morning, the doctor called and said, I hate to tell you this, but it's cancer. Our hearts, um, as you can imagine, they sank, especially when he went through all of the possibilities. You know, doctors have to do that sort of thing. And uh, some of them are pretty scary. And I have a new, a whole new level of empathy for those of you that have been given bad reports, especially uh, a terminal illness. I, I have a whole new level of understanding. And I'm believing with you that God can do a miracle for you no matter what the doctor's report is. He immediately scheduled a CT scan and they called, uh, just seemed like minutes after he called, to ask me when I would like to come in and I said, I'll come right now. <laughs> so we jumped in the car and went over there and then we had to, to wait after that and they expected that to take two days. And uh, that Monday will go down in history as the longest day in my life. Minutes seem like hours. Listen, facing death will change the way that you think about life. When I considered the possibility that I might be in heaven soon, I had this overwhelming realization that I wasn't ready to go. And I don't mean that I just wasn't ready to die. I mean, I suddenly realized that I was not ready to go spiritually. I had junk in my life that I didn't want to take to heaven with me. I want to be clear that I do not believe that God caused me to go through this. I don't believe that. that that's not in my theology. I don't believe he caused it, but needless to say, in his sovereignty, he has allowed it. And, and if that is the case, then you've got to ask the question, why? Why is he allowing me to go through this? What, what is he doing in me through this experience? And on the second day of that, the Lord gave me the scripture, Psalm 118, 17 and 18. And it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. And I didn't know the difference between the words chastise and chasten. So I looked them up in the dictionary and chastise means to punish by a scourging or whipping but chasten means to correct by suffering and discipline in order to purify and prune of excess pretense and falsity and to cause to be more humble and restrained. And you might think that sounds kind of hard, but Hebrews 12, 6 says that God chastens who? Those he loves. I could see clearly that there are two parallel events taking place here. One is my physical illness and the other was my spiritual illness 
even seemingly small things like judgments and attitudes and criticisms, I suddenly realized that when you think that you might be going to heaven soon, those things mean nothing. They mean nothing. Even in traffic, used to be if I was, you know, behind somebody one or two car lengths and I saw a guy coming up beside me, boy, I'd speed up so he couldn't get in that spot because you're not getting it, buddy. Now I'm like, go ahead, go ahead. It's all right. Take it. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, it changes your thinking. So I began to purge my life of all that was not pleasing to my father. And then I realized I should feel this way all the time. If you think about it, whether it's six months or 50 years, we all have a terminal illness called life. We're all going to heaven soon. So don't wait another day to purge yourself of all the things that you don't want to take to heaven with you. Listen, what's happening to me spiritually is actually the bigger deal. That's the bigger deal. God is using what the enemy meant for my harm, for my good. Amen. About 5.15 that Monday afternoon, my doctor called and said, I finally got some good news for you. It appears that the cancer has not spread. It's contained in your colon, and I'm referring you to a surgeon who should be able to remove it. Well, we put on the song, that old Ron Canoli song, You've turned my morning into dancing again. And we <laughs> danced around the living room. It was an awesome feeling, like 100 pounds had been lifted off of me. And we're waiting now for a surgery date, but it looks like it's going to be around uh, sometime the 1st of August. And I'm probably going to be out of commission for a couple of months. But guess what? I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Now, think about that for a minute. They're going to poke two holes in me, remove 12 inches of my colon. I'm going to be in a lot of pain and suffering for two months, and I'm chomping at the bit to get it done. Guess why? Because it means I get to live. So should it be in the purging of sin from our lives. Is it going to be painful? Yes but we should be chomping at the bit to get it done. Why? Because it means we get to live for eternity. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm actually thankful that God is allowing me to go through this infirmity. Isn't, isn't that interesting? I'm thankful for it. I understand, uh, understand now, and I hope that you better understand through hearing my experience what the Apostle Paul meant. When he said, most gladly will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me.